Let's get back to today's message with Warren Wearsby, back to the Bible's second on-air Bible teacher. Before our break, Warren talked about the two instructions Christ gave us in Matthew 11, 28 through 30. We've already covered the first, which is come. Now Warren tells us the second instruction. We're in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Now the second instruction is take. After we've come and received rest, there is a deeper rest. The rest in Matthew 11:28 is the rest of salvation. Now we have the rest of submission. Uh, the peace of God in our hearts. Salvation, that means peace with God. And your conscience is washed clean and you're given a new heart and you're right with God. Oh, that gives you rest down inside. But now he says, take, take what? Take my yoke. This is a deeper experience now. The gift of rest is different from the goal of rest in verse 29. He says, you'll find rest. Come, he gives us rest, peace with God. That's forgiveness. Take, we find rest. That's the peace of God as we fellowship with him. Take what? Take my yoke. Now, a yoke speaks of submission. Back in Jesus' day, soldiers knew the meaning of a yoke. When an army conquered the enemy, they put them under the yoke. They said, you will now submit to us. By the way, you and I are the enemy. We are our own worst enemy. D.L. Moody said, I have more trouble with D.L. Moody than with any other man. Now he says, you take my yoke because I want you to submit to me. I've conquered you, but I've conquered you with your willingness. He does not defeat us. No, no. He calls us. He says, now would you take my yoke? The farmers knew the meaning of a yoke because it was necessary for the controlling of animals. You'd get no work out of an animal unless it was controlled by the yoke. The teachers knew the meaning of yokes. The rabbis use this term frequently because when you followed a rabbi, you took his yoke. A rabbi would say to a potential pupil, take my yoke, which means learn from me. The yoke is a symbol of submission. Somebody says, I'm not going to submit. I'm not going to wear a yoke. My friend, you are already wearing some kind of yoke. You're carrying some kind of burden. Listen to Psalm 38, verse 4. For my iniquities have gone over my head like a heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. Would you rather carry the burden of sin, rebellion, disobedience? How about the burden of religion? A lot of people are religious, but it's a burden to them. Matthew chapter 23, our Lord describes this. He says that the Pharisees bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, lay them on men's shoulders. Are you following some religious teacher who's burdening you with a yoke you cannot carry? You say, well, I'm going to keep the Ten Commandments. Well, God bless you. In Acts chapter 15, verse 10, we're told by Peter that it's a yoke. Now, therefore, why do you test God? by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. You want to go back under law instead of God's grace? It's a yoke you cannot bear. The worst burden of all is described in Job, book of Job, chapter 7, verse 20. Job is speaking, and he says, Have I sinned? What have I done to you, O watcher of men? Why have you set me as your target so that I am a burden to myself? A burden to myself. Are you a burden to yourself? Now Jesus says, you want to get rid of all these burdens. I'll give you one yoke for the many yokes you're trying to bear. I'll give you a light yoke for the heavy yokes. I'll give you one that fits you and won't gall you and bruise you. And I'll give you a yoke that instead of being a burden will bring rest to your soul. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Come. That's the rest of salvation. Take my yoke upon you, and you will find rest for your souls, the yoke of submission. Now there is a third instruction he gives us. He tells us to come, 
and to take and to learn. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. His commandments, says John, are not grievous. When you love someone and you're yoked to that person, the very desires of their heart become the joy of your life. I think of that incident in the cave when David was hiding with his mighty men, and he said under his breath, oh, I wish I had a drink of that water from the well at Bethlehem. And some of his mighty men broke through the enemy lines and got a cup of cold water for David and brought it back. He didn't command them. His desire was their desire. That's what Jesus is saying here. Learn of me. We've gone from a crisis to a process. Come, take. That's the crisis. You do that once. Learn. Ah, that's the daily process. But notice that he doesn't teach us until we've taken the yoke. That's important. I meet a lot of people who say, oh, I wish I understood the Bible better. I'll tell you how to understand the Bible better. Obey it. Just obey what you know, and God will teach you more. John chapter 7, verse 17, If anyone is willing to do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. So our Lord doesn't say, come and learn. Oh, you'd like it that way. That's easy. No, he says, come, take my yoke, join yourself to me, put yourself under my divine limitations, and then I'll be able to teach you. You can't teach somebody who wants to run his own life. From a crisis to a process, daily learning from him, from ignorance to knowledge. Oh, how ignorant we are of the Lord. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. People have such strange views about God. In verse 25, Jesus says, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. That's beautiful, Father. The one name for God that Jesus tried to teach to his disciples, Father. You're not afraid of a father. You respect a father. You listen to a father, but you love a father. Lord of heaven and earth. Isn't that marvelous? To wake up in the morning and say, my father is the Lord of heaven and earth. My father takes care of everything. Imagine, if you will, a prince, a little boy who wakes up in the palace. Does he worry? No. His father's in control. His father has wealth. His father has power. His father has authority. And so the little prince is not at all afraid. Why? Because his father is in control. The Lord says, would you learn of me that God is not a tyrant? God is not a bully. God is not a distant creator. God is not dead. God loves you. He is your father. He is the Lord of heaven and earth. Now learn of me. How do we learn of him? by listening and by obeying. We open the Word of God and we are yoked to the Lord and we submit to Him and we learn of Him. And then we obey. And as we obey, He teaches us more. And if we want to go our own way, that yoke pulls us back. We are not yoked to one another. We are yoked to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ says, you don't have to worry. I know where I'm going. I know what I'm doing. I want you to submit. Someone says, but meekness is weakness. No, it isn't. When he says, I am meek or I am gentle and lowly in heart, he is expressing strength. It's the weak people who are violent. It's the weak people who have to lie and scheme. Those who are submitted to the Lord and yoked to him become like him. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is power under control. You yoke a couple of strong horses together, you've got power, and it's under control. And that's what meekness really is. Our Lord has power. He shares that power with us, and our hearts are at rest. You and I cannot control the circumstances and the people around us. The more we try to manipulate and control other people and circumstances, the more dependent we become. No, the solution is simply come, take, and learn. And the result? 
you shall find rest unto your soul. Thanks for joining us as we celebrate 75 years of ministry with today's message by Warren Wearsby. Next week on Back to the Bible, God describes His Word as light, water, a mirror, even a sword. Each description helps us understand the transforming power given to us through the Bible. So be sure to join us next week as Warren Wearsby goes back to the Bible to give us pictures of God's Word. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light, momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. To read and reflect on that passage again, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Thank you for listening to Back to the Bible. Join us again tomorrow. God bless you.